Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and in this tutorial we're going to look at drawing stuff in our game view. So at the moment I've got this view which extends surface view and I've made it fill the whole screen, although it doesn't have to, it could just be one view in your application. But I made it fill the whole um, application screen here and at the moment it's just black because it's not drawing anything but in this tutorial I'm going to make it actually draw something and I've got some graphics here and um, these are actually uh, I've, I've got separate shadows from the actual graphics themselves and there are a couple of advantages to doing that and one is that you can more easily find the non-transparent area of your image if the shadow is, is separate to it and it's not um, making things more complicated. And the other thing is that you can decide where to draw the shadows, whether they go over the top of other objects or underneath them. But this is absolutely not central to what we're doing. And you could perfectly well adapt this tutorial to just drawing any kind of image that you like. You don't need to have separate shadows at all. And what I did was I just copied these and I've just pasted them. I created a new drawable folder in Res. So I went to, I right click Res here and I went to New Folder and created a folder just called Drawable. And then I right click Drawable and pasted the graphics into there. And you can also just use Explorer in Windows if you're using Windows to um, copy your bitmaps into this folder on the disk and then you just have to right click the folder and refresh it. So I've already done that so that I've got a folder called drawable with the graphics in it and you could put your graphics in one of these drawable and the resolution um, kind of suffix folders and the reason I'm not doing that here is just because to keep things simple in this tutorial and because I'm tremendously lazy I'm not going to create different resolution bitmaps I'm just going to have one folder with all my bitmaps in for the purposes of this demo. So I've got some graphics, PNG files that I want to use here. And I created those with POV Ray and GIMP, the free photo manipulation tool actually. And uh, I'm going to, in my game view here, which extends surface view, I'm going to right click and go to source override implement methods. And I'm going to navigate to view here and I'm going to override on touch. Let's take a look. Uh, I think it's on touch, on touch event, here we go. And on touch event is called both when the user touches a screen and also it receives drag events and uh, other kind of touch related events. And um, as a sort of shortcut here, I'm just going to return true. And in fact, you should return true when you handle an event and false when you don't. And if you return false, you'll get the actual touch events, but you won't then get, for example, drag events, because you can't have a drag event without a touch event. And if you haven't handled the touch event, then there's no point in it telling you about the drag event. So you have to return true to get kind of motion events. And I, sh I should really just return true if I handle it, but I'm, for the moment I'm just going to full stop return true so that I can receive all events. And in here I'm going to draw on my surface view. And the first thing I need to do is get the surface holder, which is some kind of object that allows you to get a canvas to draw on. I'm going to say I'm going to say surface holder holder equals get holder. Now I've seen a lot of code on the internet, I've just had the import with control shift O, that then puts a synchronized block around this holder and I wonder if that might be based on a misconception because if you have, if you synchronize on an object you're not preventing other threads from doing stuff with that object, all you're doing is getting the intrinsic lock of the object and the idea is you, you can use that intrinsic lock as a way of synchronizing your threads, but it doesn't stop other threads diving in there and doing stuff with it. You wouldn't actually be locking this 
by synchronizing on it you would just be um, getting its intrinsic lock and in any case fortunately the holder provides us with a way of synchronizing drawing to the canvas so I don't think we're going to need to worry about any kind of multi-threading synchronization here I, I think as far as I know it's kind of handled for us uh, so what the next step is I'm going to say holder.getCanvas actually I'm not, I'm going to say holder.lockCanvas and this returns a canvas object that we can then draw on and the idea behind this lock method is that it locks the canvas so that nothing else can draw on it which is our synchronization and again I'll add the import for that and this will often return null if it can't lock it it will return null so we then need to make sure that if the canvas is null we don't do anything so I'm going to say if canvas is not equal to null and then and only then will we do our drawing code and uh, if you if the canvas is not null then you have to remember to unlock it as well so you need again it's a method of this holder object and you say holder.unlock canvas and post and pass it the canvas and I think by post it means kind of post your updates to the canvas so in other words unlock the canvas make it available to other threads to draw on and post your updates to it in other words do the actual drawing that you've specified while it was locked I'm not sure about that but I, I suppose that's the meaning of it so if we've got a canvas we remember to unlock it and in between locking it and unlocking it we can now draw on that canvas and I'm going to firstly clear it and fill it with a colour by saying canvas dot draw and you'll notice there's a whole load of drawing methods here that I'll leave you to explore like draw circle draw rect and so on but I'm just going to say draw colour which um, means fill the canvas with a particular colour and I'm going to say colour dot white so that we just have a white background to work with and after that I want to actually draw a bitmap and to draw a bitmap we've got to first load it and I can load it using bitmap factory so I'm going to go to the constructor here and I'm going to say bitmap factory bitmap factory dot decode I think it's decode resource yeah that's it decode resource and the first method is a resources object so we can just say get resources to get our resources which includes these graphics here and the idea is the idea of the bitmap that you want to load so we say r dot drawable dot and I'll pick one of these graphics down here and I'll, I'll use this button in fact and that's going to return me a bitmap object so let's make that a private variable up here just for the moment so I'll say private bitmap button and then down here I can say button equals bitmap factory dot decode resource and I'll add the import for bitmap and now we can draw the button here so after I've locked the canvas and cleared it I can say canvas dot draw bitmap and I can pass in a bitmap to draw here and I'll use I think this particular variety of the method so my bitmap here is going to be button and for the top and left let's just make it 1550 for the moment and uh, I think I can pass null for paint um, I've I worked through this code um, a few times already before and uh, I've forgotten what I actually did with that but let's try that and see if it actually works because uh, <laughs> that's kind of the acid test and um, so I'll, I'll run my program here and let's take a look at the Android console here and if your console isn't there by the way then you need to go to window show view console which sometimes catches people out and let's just take a look at this and see if it works because um, oh yeah now, now I'm going to touch the screen so I'm going to go to my phone and actually touch the screen and there we go and there's my bitmap it's actually a bit big really anyway I'm going to carry on working with this and what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a, like a bat here and a bat here 
and we can we're going to be able to knock this backwards and forwards between these bats so we're going to move on next to looking at how we can then animate this and have it move around so until next time happy coding <laughs>